Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to The Hangman. Previously, we met some new characters. Ones who really did not like rats. Staff's room. There are a few towels on the table. It's kind of random. There's nothing in the trash can. A bunk bed. It's covered in dust. Possibly empty shelves. Small shelves. There's a piece of paper inside. Between a map of Sunnyside. It's a change of pace. Confiscate from 3202. There's something written on the back. If people have such things as hometowns, the city must be my heart's eternal hometown. Hearing children laugh in the grass in Oak Park, I get a meal in Sunnyside Village, and then I cross Baylands Park so I can watch the ships leave Sunnyside Bay. But those happy days are never to return, if only someone could take me back there. Kitchen. A staff member's diary. I scold the patient of 3202 for drawing on the floors. He keeps wandering with a map of his hometown. It was just depressing, so I confiscated it. But he's still wandering around there. The patient of 3408 is clamoring about being watched. I take up the cell to serve as makeshift blinds, but he still says he's being watched. He sits in a chair by his bed up against the bars, looking into the hall through the tape he keeps muttering. Everyone is watching me. Talk about disturbing. Clues. Stove. Fridge. Nothing else here. There's a doodle on the floor. Put the lime in the coconut. We'll come back to you. Wrong way. It's be a lot easier if I remember the cell numbers. Okay, there's a bunch of cells here. Check the main door first. Let's hit those showers. Nice. Empty like the shelves. Empty also. Nothing. Beautiful. Is there cell numbers? No. Let's just check each individual shelf. I mean, cell. There's something there. There's never something there. A bed. That's so weird. That shadow really needs to stop. I think the shadow's just following me in general. Like, look, see? Let me see something real quick. Oak Park, Oak Road. Yeah, I was right, and it is Oak Park, Oak Road. So let me check this real quick again. Oak Park, Sunnyside, which is like a big circle, half circle thing. Baylands, and then Sunnyside Bay. Okay, so we have to visit these places in order. Here. Wow, it looks like absolutely nothing. A 
unlock the inside lock. Okay, so we've connected ourselves back to the original building. Um, I don't see much of a point to go there just yet. So let's go back down to the first floor, to the first drawing. To the, the lime and the coconut. I'm not getting used to that shadow. <laughs> lime and the coconut. Uh huh? Is it running out of batteries? Uh, I mean, I did just pick it up off the ground. That's not good. Um, sh shadow dog? Another shadow dog? Is somebody there? Maybe actual dog? Poor little Will. No, it's a talking dog. Okay, that's normal. You're so scared and lost. What did I tell you? You have to believe us. Believe us and burn it all down. Go find him, quickly. Because you still can't do anything by yourself. Billy? How many, how many friends did you have? For every situation in your life, I imagine. Father's death. Well, coming to say these strange things, I mean... It was before your husband died that your son started talking about his friends, wasn't it? So I don't think there's a connection. They could simply be figments of his imagination. Long time no see, Will. You don't seem to be in good spirits. I've had enough of this hospital. They keep asking me things. It's like they're mad at me. Yes, so it seems, even though there's nothing wrong with you. Hey, why don't you try talking to everyone, Billy? I don't exist. Then everyone will believe me. They'd understand that I wasn't just a weirdo talking to nothing. Well... Didn't I tell you before? No one will believe in a talking dog. Except, you know, when they see a dog actually talking to them. You symbolic Why thing of my self-doubts. As proof of being a good friend. I'm being mistreated by my master here. He last fed me two days ago. And the last time before that, I forget when. That's awful. And that's not all. The doctor here often brings a woman to the examining room. It's not his wife. There's a repulsive smell of perfume left in that room. Well, animals don't lie, unlike humans. So I want you to trust me. Try it. Go and see if what I told you is true. Thanks, anti-adultery dog. Will, how have you been lately? Are you still talking to those friends of yours? I'm not talking to you anymore. You're a bad man. Why am I a bad man? Don't mistreat old Billy. What's that? Don't mistreat old Billy! Poor Billy's just a bag of bones. You're not feeding him at all. What are you talking about? Billy's my dear dog. I would never mistreat him. Granted, I haven't fed him this morning yet. Yesterday? Did I feed him? Maybe the day before. I've been rather busy. And not just that. You're bringing a woman here. You're a liar, Doctor! A big, unfaithful coward! Will, calm down. You came here to talk to me, didn't you? Not to fight. Don't touch me! <coughs> Stop it! Let go! Let go, I say! <coughs> you little demon! Horrible!
Yep. Thanks for showing me the truth, anti-adultery dog. Believe us, Will. We don't lie. Someday one of us will appear before you. One who understands you well. Follow him. That can't have been Billy. Cause he... he was even an old coot even back then. There's no way he's still alive. Follow him? Was he talking about Pop? Why would he say something like that? I don't understand. And the dog means Keith. But he does have a point. I really can't do anything on my own. I'm hopeless without Pop around. Notice. We encourage everyone to lead a quiet life. Do not talk loudly. This is not a lounge. Watch your step in the halls and don't make too much noise. If you find someone hurting himself or hurting others, inform the staff at once. Keep your hands and feet to yourself. Ah! I see something. It feels like somebody's watching me. That's scary. I don't want to go through here. But we have to, to solve the puzzles. Or not. Cell bars are covered with packing tape. Push. Is this, is this a chair puzzle or are we literally moving the chair? Everwood's so hilarious to me. It. Everyone is watching you. Nice. Seems like that bad feeling went away. Ah, uh, it's a symbolic watching. The notice reminds the patient that everyone's watching out for each other and the facilities watching out for you. So that's why they always feel like they're being watched because if people misbehave, they're eventually gonna find out, I guess. That's how I'm interpreting that anyway. I should really save. I have not seen that in a very long time. Wow. I can see the whole forest. These woods really are big. This hospital must have been built here to be hidden. After all, it was full of weirdos. Of course they'd want to hide it. All the patients here had their own worlds. They didn't try to leave them. So all you could do was remove them from society. And I guess... I'm the same way. I'm locked up in my own world. Everyone else thinks I'm nuts. What's... 
going to happen to me, I wonder? Uh, just follow you. No, 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 not because I want to. You found your rat yet? I found my lack of self control. You said earlier about how Pop could talk. Do you actually think that? I should have never told you that. I already knew you wouldn't believe me. It's how it's been for a long time. See animals talking and things others don't see, but no one's ever believed me. The truth is, all animals can talk, but no one believes them, so they don't. Who told you that? Old Billy, an old skinny dog at my counselor's place. Won't talk as nobody will believe it, huh? Sounds like somebody I know. So, what started it? Huh? Animals talking? Seeing weird stuff. Was there something that started it all off? Some kind of tragic backstory event, maybe. Possibly involving your father. What started it? It was the hanged man. Oh, yeah? Ugh, enough! The more I say, the more you'll think I'm nuts. It was, a uh, hanged man. Copyright 2017, Uri. Translated by VG Person. Well, suppose you might fall under that category. When I was a kid, I judged a lot by what's visible. This person looks good. This person's athletic. This person's smart. This person really likes anime. The seeds of imagination get trimmed as soon as they bud. Because in a small community, they just get in the way. Not many people can grow them right. If you can get a good flower to bloom, that can be a big advantage to you. Nothing to moan and groan over. Just stop it! Don't talk like you understand. You're just saying you don't believe me either, right? Sure, I'm not going to believe you. But I do happen to think it's very interesting. Something wrong with that? I sort of get what you're saying, but... Because of my weirdness, people suspect Mom of treating me badly. I don't want to trouble her anymore. What do you think parents are for? They act like stepping stones for their kids. If you can make her smile someday, it's fine. How about you give up your rat search for today? It's only going to get darker. Besides, David's worried about you. No, he's not. Like he could be worried about me. Wow. Oh, I wonder if the one guy worries about me, the one that got me out of that tough situation with that manager when I wrecked his shop. And gave me a place to stay. And has been calling about me. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not his cousin. <gasps> I'm David's little brother. It's just our father who's the same, but... For a long time, I never knew, but my mom was on the phone the other day. What a twist. Is the food ready yet? I'm hungry. Manuel, your internal thoughts sound a lot deeper than your normal voice. And again, so do mine. Mr. Hoover, please, just leave it be. It's all on me. Mom? No, I didn't know. But I found out about you later. I couldn't do anything. And I feel terrible about what happened to your mother. Will has nothing to do with this, alright? Please, don't say anything to him. He loved his father. I don't want to disillusion him. Mom? Will! S sorry about that. It's time to eat, isn't it? I'll start getting it ready. I've never seen Mom cry before. Hoover. The person I met at Dad's funeral all those years ago.
time to pop open the Googles. Or check these shelves that are not, in fact, empty. A diary. It's Dad's. I found out by reading Dad's diary. After Mom got pregnant with me, he divorced David's mom. Mom never knew Dad had another family until he died. He kept it a secret the whole time. There were a lot of photos kept in the diary. Photos of David and his mom. He wrote about a lot of old memories and things, too. He also wrote, I regret abandoning my family. Whenever I meet him, David won't even look at me. I doubt I'll ever be forgiven for abandoning my frail wife and my middle school-aged son. The diary also had a letter in it. The letter came with the hangman card and said, You're a demon child. So that's that letter you have? I'm sure this letter didn't come from Dad. It must have been addressed to me and he hid it. After all, I stole Dad away from David. It's all because of me. I ruined David's family. So you think it was David who wrote that letter? And David was the one who called and made your mom cry? I'm pretty sure David probably doesn't give a shit. N no, not necessarily. It's just I can't think of any other possibility. Mom is always cheerful and tough, but she was crying. If Mom's being threatened by somebody, I'm not able to protect her. If anything, since David's lacking a lot of family, I feel like he would actually want to bond more with what family he has. Pop tried to stop me. He said, what good will it do to go? What can you even do? But I just couldn't stand it. Mom had David's address written down, so I used that to... Uh-huh. Well, you didn't have to lie and say you were his cousin. David was the one who said that. After I broke some merchandise at a fishing shop and he got called in. Eh? What'd you do that for? Dad liked to fish. He used to take me along. I was lost and wandered into a fishing shop. and I saw the same fishing rod Dad used to have. When I thought of how Mom was suffering because of Dad, before I knew it, I was stomping it to pieces. I came to apologize to David, to say I'm sorry for messing up his family. And yeah, I went and did that and caused him more trouble, so I ended up just running away. Why am I such a coward? I don't know what I should do anymore. Well, not stomp all over your determination, but hey. I think the letter you've got was written by David. That isn't David's writing. And at least in my opinion, he doesn't have the guts to threaten others. He's stupidly good-natured. On top of that, you say David called your mom, but you didn't hear the conversation, right? Isn't it jumping the gun to say he's threatening her? Then this letter... Whatever it was that led you here, you came to talk to David, right? And David could have pretended you were a stranger, but he didn't. He decided to take you with him. He must have wanted to talk to you. You know, like the thing he said he was going to do in the morning? In which case, you ought to meet him properly. If you think you've troubled him, apologize for it. You're only a real coward if you give up now. There's one other person I need to apologize to. Who's that? The owner of the fishing shop. He was too scared and nervous. So I never apologize for breaking the merchandise. What about Sophie? Does anyone just forget about Sophie's existence suddenly? What if Sophie never Then you existed? better do that. Yeah. I'll be heading out after a little more searching. You should consider the same. If you really want to keep going, there's always tomorrow. See you. Speaking of which, Keith had even asked about Sophie and all. Like, hey, wasn't Sophie with you? Where does she go? Like, oh, she's just lost in some mysterious, dark, abandoned building. In the middle of a snowstorm. It's like, oh, okay. It's alright. Keith. Um, Keith. Was your son important to you? 
Oof. <laughs> yeah, best guy in the world. I still think so now. I wouldn't call your old man's decision right or wrong. Either way, it hurt people, and he regretted it himself. Putting yourself through pain might seem irrational to you, but that's the way a lot of things are. If you butt at everyone, it will be hard to live. What I can say is, don't grovel. Your old man didn't make his decision for you to do that. It was just his way of settling things. Stick out your chest and don't lose sight of your goal. You didn't come all this way to cry and say, it's my fault, did you? He's right. Whatever got me to come here, I've made it this far, so I better do what I need to do. I haven't talked with David yet, and I still need to find Pop. This is no time to be crying. That scared me. It seems more run down than the other buildings. I'd better be careful. Building map. Storage, rubbish. Three floors, fourth floor, and the fifth floor day room. So that means we're actually on the fourth floor right now. Staff room, kitchen, shower room to the south. Upstairs is the day room, and the bomb floors are an endless series of empty rooms and shelves. Hmm. There's some stuff, name tags on the shelves. Tyler, Norman, Dan, Dennis, Hugo. Empty, empty. A trash chute. There's a strange stain on the wall. Looks sort of like a person. Creepy. Artwork of the Month, room 4305, Kenny Jenkins. I love shake hands with good people. Four three oh five. Second floor, second room, rather, and the next floor down. So it'll be this one over here. Ah! Ooh, boy. Was that? Ugh, that's scary. I don't want to go through here. This should work. Nothing happened. Good. Oh boy, these are these types of cells. No drawing. I hear something weird. Strange stain on the wall. Looks sort of like a person. Creepy. For real, this is bad. I need to find popping it out of here.
sitting right on the floor. Demons are coming from the shower room, from the hallway, and now even in this room. This place is hell. The screams of the dead echo here. The demons must be stopped at once. Strange stain on the wall. Looks sort of like a person, creepy. jar. No purpose there. Still have the knife. Hmm. Nice. Nice modern art. That should be all of them. Can't go this way, huh? Jeez, that scared me. What the hell? Looks like our ambitions came crashing down. Huh? I... I... It won't open. You're kidding me. Hey! Is anybody there? Keith! Keith, hey, open up! Open the door! Keith! Oh, great. The hangman. Yeah. The hangman was what started it. When I started to see strange things. Be a little hanged man. Hey, what are you doing over there? Does it look like I'm playing around? My mom said you shouldn't climb trees. Oh, I'm not climbing. I'm hanging. Why are you hanging? Why do you think? I don't know. I'm sure you will someday. I'm not hanging because I want to. I was hanged by all the things in this world. It started with a minor sense of wrongness in myself, in others, in society, in the world. A deficit of things that should just naturally be. Mere nagging feelings that seemed to corner me without even noticing. They got bigger, made me suffer, until they became a rope around my neck. Beware, Will. Never overlook even the most trivial feelings and sensations. Never shut your eyes to the oddities you sense. Everything you feel, that is your ally, and the very world itself. Never doubt it. If you do, it will all become your enemy. I'm sure the things that cornered me will someday stand behind you too. I don't really get it, but I feel like you're saying something really important. Can I come visit you again? I want to hear more. Oh, God. You can come see me anytime. I'll be waiting.
I'm gonna go play outside, Mom! Don't go playing in the woods in the back. There might be policemen there. I feel like we'll must really see, like, the other world or something. After I met the hangman, I started seeing these strange things. Mime, Murdoch, Misery, Old Billy. So we know the Sandman exists, and I read all the creatures in that world, so... And Pop, too. Of course I know. There's no way a talking rat could exist. I just don't want to acknowledge it. If I did, I really would just be nuts. More than anything, I'm scared of losing such a reliable friend who knows everything. I just don't know. Are the things I see and hear real or not? Nobody could see or hear my friends, so everyone figured they were in my head. That would make sense, at least. But what about the hangman? He was a real person who killed himself. He definitely existed. Or was he just a fake too? What's fake and what's real? No one understood me. Mom worried for me. But she didn't believe me. Dad listened to me all the time. He didn't make fun of me or anything. I felt like he was the only one who got me. But Dad was a traitor and a coward. Just like that damn counselor. At the same time, he was saying he loved me and Mom. He was abandoning his other family. I feel like I sort of get what the hangman said now. What he told me was... like a revelation. As you grow up, you start to see things you didn't. You turn distrustful of things that only just bothered you as a kid. With others just as much as myself, I don't know what's a lie and what's the truth. I feel like the path I'm on is getting all twisted. Or maybe a little bit crooked. Man. I've always felt uneasy about how at this rate, I might end up meeting the same fate as the hanged man. I want someone to tell me, to admonish me, let me know what's wrong and what's right. Honestly, I want to just keep walking a straight path like anybody else. But maybe that was impossible for me from the start. Because I'm the demon child who ruined David's family. What am I even doing? There's no point in crying to myself, they hear. Help might never come, so I've got to do something myself. I'll cool my head and think. I'm sure I can sell this if I do that. There's nothing of note. When I lower the handle, there's no resistance. So is the handle broken? Normally, lowering the handle would catch the bolt inside and open the door. I'll look in the gap to see if the bolt's moving. Thought so, the bolt's not moving. Maybe I'll open if I catch the bolt with something. Ideally, something L shaped. It's a little thick, I don't think it can fit in the gap. It's not like it's mine. Probably okay to fold it, right? Alright, let's stick this in the gap in the door. I did it. I got out. See, I could do that just fine. It's stupid to cry about it. I can't just be freaking out. What 
was that sound? Will! What are you doing over there? Ah, uh, it's nothing. Just, um, looking at this art. Okay, for the hidden gold! Anyway, Will, I was looking for you. I know I was told to leave, but I really wanted to apologize. Oh, well, it would've been mine if it wasn't for you meddling kid. I'm truly so sorry for earlier. I had no idea that was your rat. It wasn't Pop. Huh? That rat wasn't Pop, so you don't need to apologize. Oh, oh, good. Oh, that's wonderful. Hey, Robert, why did you grab me earlier? Sorry for that. I was a bit bewildered after having the detective glare at me. I apologize for getting rough. I'd advise staying away from that detective. You can't tell what he's thinking. He's just scary. Say, Will, did you really get separated from your friend? If you like, I'll search with you. Can you tell me what he looks like? Like a mouse? I don't wanna. Why not? Because you're a liar. You were looking for someone in the library. Saying you came here for nostalgia is a big, fat lie. And when you grabbed me, it was right after I said Ed's name. You're still looking for something even now, aren't you? I'm sure you're not a bad person, but you're hiding something. That's why you're always averting your eyes. And yeah, Keith might be scary, alright. Someone who sneaks around in secret like us. Once you have Blog B, Will grows up to be some kind of super detective that talks to, like, talking animals. But he looked me in the eyes and talked to me, and it felt like he understood me. But you... What are you hiding? It's not... It's not like I'm keeping secrets because I want to, you know? Why did this have to happen to me? I haven't done anything. And after I'd finally crawled my way up from that shithole of a life... It's all his fault. That damn father of mine. What? Keith. Keith. It's him. Will, it's get over him. here. Why would I can't. Will, get away from the muttering, shaking man. It's him. Near the big hole in the ground. Keith. Why would uh, this guy's acting can't. weird. Why? I... Come on, over it's here. Him. It's all him. <laughs> Let go. We discuss this, Will. Don't move a muscle. Get rid of your gun. I said get rid of it! Do you realize what you're doing? Detective, tell me the truth. You all, you suspect me, don't you? That's why you're watching me. I didn't. I didn't kill my father, I tell you! I despised him, certainly. An alcoholic who didn't do any real work, quick to turn violent. A complete shithead. But once I got away from him, I've been doing nothing but honest work. Why would I go kill him and make myself unhappy again? Please, stop trying to hunt me down. If you keep chasing me, I feel like I'll go insane. We don't suspect you. The circumstantial evidence makes it clear. You're not the killer. Then why assign someone to watch me? Thought I told you. He's your guard. Because the killer might come for you next. That's inconceivable. And why? You think of yourself as a victim, and so do we. But not to him. To him there's no difference between the father who beat him, and you who abandoned him there. Oh god. I know who this is. Abandoned? Even after I ran from our father, I've been sending him money. I didn't abandon him. Ed. We know. We're not blaming you for your past actions. And with your own family now, we know you want to keep them safe. So, I want you to trust us a little more. Please, let go of Will. Stop driving yourself into a corner. Detective, please. W won't you 
let my little brother Ed go. He's just not the kind of person to kill someone. He may be slow, but he's kind and likes animals. He's a really good person. You've never talked to my brother, have you? He has a terrible stutter. That's what our father's beating did to him. It wouldn't be a surprise for anyone to kill our father, human garbage that he was. And if anyone had the right to kill him, it would be Ed. It's true. I abandoned Ed along with my father. I knew if I left him there, he would only be unhappy. That's why, now, I have to protect him, before he becomes any more unhappy. Don't get the wrong idea. We're not the ones judging him. Our job is just to catch him. If he gets away now, he'll just be running forever. Could you call that happiness? If you're going back to the hotel, I can escort you. When we had to think about it, there was a lot of coincidences that had to fall in place the exact same time for the events of this game to occur. I'm fine on my own. Or rather, let me be alone. Robert was never seen again. Are you hurt? Alive. I'm fine. Um, Keith, so it was Robert's dad who got killed? I told you not to get involved. I'm not saying a word to you. <sighs> Come on, Will. Don't you feel like leaving yet? <sighs> Don't know why I bothered to ask. Robert, he's Ed's brother. So then, Ed killed her dad? No way. It can't be a killer, right? You seem nice to me. If I see Ed again, what should I do? Wait, does Keith even know Ed is here? I've got to tell him.